I don't care what you or anyone else says, this movie sucks. X-Men Origins Wolverine had so much promise, but overall was such a wasted potential of a film. As a kid, I remember I liked it, but I thought maybe it's not as bad as people say. I mean, I like X-Men Apocalypse. Honest to God, I love X-Men 3. People hate X-Men 3, but I love it. But X-Men Origins Wolverine was just so boring. The movie overall, to me, it felt like it was a movie made by Bot Studios. Like, seriously. Like, this scene right here where Wolverine t uh, tells off his wife felt straight out like from Dawn of the Seven. The story you told me about the man who gets flowers for the moon. I had it backwards. I thought you were the moon and I was your Wolverine. But you're the trick star, aren't you? I'm just a fool who got played. I've been running my whole life. I think it's time that I stay put for a while. It's time I went home. I know this is dawn of the seven. The sunset on Atrium. Like, there are so many scenes that just feel so fake and hollow. Like, it's so, like, so disconnected from reality. Like, so much, so much padding. Like, ugh. Like, there was so many unnecessary things to Logan's backstory. For instance, the death of his father. Did we really need another parental death to kick off a hero's origin story? Are you kidding me? This was in Green Lantern. This is in all the Batman movies. Spider-Man. <laughs> like, I'm surprised that Wonder Woman's mom didn't get her head cut off by Ares in her own movie. Like, it was so unnecessary. And even when Logan discovers his powers for the first time, it was just so unintentionally hilarious. Where I was just like, what? <laughs> He's just running like that? I'm sorry, I don't mean to... <laughs> no, no shade to the actor, but I'm sorry, but this was just so funny. But this whole scene was just so unnecessary. Like, the opening montage showing Wolverine throughout the decades, uh, throughout all the wars in human history, was interesting. Or all the wars after he was born, of course. Like, that was a great montage. And then afterwards, we get to see one, one mission with Stryker. And then that's it. Stryker in the X-Men movies was supposed to be a big part of Logan's backstory. I can't believe we completely glossed over that with just one solo mission. I mean, granted, I imagine, yes, there's been multiple missions, but I kind of wish we got to see a little bit more of that. And we spent a lot of time with the movie with Wolverine's wife. Oh my god, this relationship is so boring. Like, there's no chemistry whatsoever. It feels so fake, and I know what some of you are going to say. It's like, well, everything is fake because she's a double agent. I'm like, yeah. But you want to believe that it's real just like Logan believes in it. I mean, like in 2003 Teen Titans, like the reason why Terra fooled everybody was because it was real. The relationship was real. Everyone loved her. The Titans loved her. So when she stabbed everybody in the back, it was heartbreaking. Like everyone, like tensions were high and you felt it. But it was just the reveal in the movie was such a big wet fart. And the special effects... Oh my god, it's atrocious! Look at Wolverine's claws! It looks like special effects straight out from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It works for that movie because it's supposed to be a cartoon. I don't think the Adamantium claws are supposed to be a cartoon. I know a lot of the, like, the questions I have with like, I mean, some of it just looks so fake. And, and Ryan Reynolds is in it as Deadpool, and, you know, I love him as Deadpool, but in here... The movie doesn't allow him to go full Deadpool. It doesn't show his full potential. It's very dry and it's very toned down and very a lackluster showing of Deadpool. And I really want to understand what the thought process was with him showing up into the room, like just doing that. I, I don't know why they thought this would be a cool scene. I mean, this part in the action scene was really cool, but this is so embarrassing to watch. And then if we're going to talk about Weapon 11, if we're really going to talk about Deadpool, I love the idea of a mutant hybrid for Wolverine to fight, but why did it have to be Deadpool? Of all the characters, I just, I don't know why they couldn't just made up a new character. Like, screw it. The ideas were kind of cool. Like, I, I mean, I like the fact that, like, Wolverine has to fight another character with a healing factor, with some blades. Oh, wait a minute. But, but one who, who can teleport and one that has Cyclops' optic blast. That's pretty cool. But it's not cool because it's Deadpool. The movie makes a lot of questionable story decisions. Like, for no reason. Like, if you watch First Class, you're like, okay, why, what's the point of Shaw? Well, we need a villain. 
We need a villain that actually drives Magneto into becoming a villain, but also this is what brings him to Charles. Because of his revenge quest, this is what actually gets him to meet Charles in the first place. And that's how they form this bond because they have a common enemy and among other things. And then in the end, his hatred and his lust for vengeance and his disregard to Charles's wisdom leads him to becoming Magneto, the Magneto we know and love. Another change that they did, I was like, oh, why is Mystique and Xavier basically adopted siblings? Well, this humanizes her. This, she comes from a loving upbringing. Well, mostly from Charles's side. I know his parents suck, but still, she has a good influence from Xavier. But the negative influence from Magneto brings her to the dark side. And it becomes heartbreaking because Charles loses a sister. But it was wonderful. That movie had so much intelligence as opposed to X-Men Origins. Why is Wolverine Team Tooth Brothers? I don't know. Why did Deadpool become an allegory for butthole? I don't know. Why do we need to repeat an element of an origin story that's been done to death thousands of times with other superheroes, including Daredevil? I don't know. All the cool kids are doing it. Why didn't you just have Sabretooth fight Wolverine and knock him out and then steal his DNA for Weapon 11? Instead of just having this whole compilated bullshit of a mess for a poor attempt at a twist just so you can get Wolverine his claws? Why would Stryker need Wolverine if he has Deadpool? Like, you don't need him. Like, you want to give him amnesia so you can have more control over him? But, like, you already do that with Deadpool. Like, you control him with your little keyboard. You don't need Wolverine. Like, why Why would Stryker give him claws? It doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of choices like that. There's a lot of choices of, like, why? Like, why make Sabretooth and Wolverine brothers? But, like, the whole movie is centered around their rivalry. The fact that Sabretooth killed his wife. But, you find out the wife didn't die, and that they were in cahoots to trick Wolverine into joining Stryker's bullshit to get adamantium skeleton shit. Then, you rewatch the movie, it's like, well, what's the point? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Sabretooth didn't do anything to Wolverine. Like, what was the point of this whole movie, this whole journey? Like, if it was to show how he got the claws, well, we already saw that in X2. If it was to show what his life was like before the X-Men, well, his life sucks and it's uninteresting. And the parts that are interesting, they completely glossed over. I'm kind of torn between the idea of having Wolverine betray as more of an anti-hero in this movie, because, like, on one hand, it makes sense for Wolverine to be a completely different person, because when you have amnesia, you don't have the memories and the um, experience. You don't have the memories of the experience that made you you. Like, if you ever watch Regarding Henry, I love that movie. I highly recommend it. It's a perfect capsulation of what happens to someone who has amnesia. Like, Henry starts off as a sniveling asshole, and by the end, he becomes America's sweetheart. So, I kind of get that, like, you can't have Wolverine be a blood-lusted psychopath, but I would have preferred, it would have been kind of interesting if you had him be, like, kind of blood-lusted psychopath, but someone who has a line, meaning that there are certain things that they won't do, like killing women and children. That could be Wolverine's line. Although, that's the difference between him and Sabretooth. Sabretooth doesn't care. That's, that's a dynamic that you can do, right? I mean, like, it's kind of like Scarface, right? Scarface is a bad person, but we like him because he's not as bad as the other people that are in his circles. But in the movie, he's more or less the same person as he was after he lost his memory, which is kind of a bummer. The action scenes are not as memorable as they were in Wolverine. Like the Wolverine train scene? Oh! Or even Logan, the scene in the forest. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. And if there was a memorable fight scene, it is not for good reasons. There are some positives that I can say. Like, I think Hugh Jackman did a fantastic job as Wolverine. He really gave it his all. Sabretooth was cool, I guess. Eh, he was alright. I liked I liked the actor. The actor is really cool. I always like seeing him in things. But if there is one uber super delicious thing that came out from this movie, it's its video game, which completely deserves its own video, but god damn if you haven't played this video game, it is superb. I don't know if Insomniac can make a better game than this. Like, holy crap, like, like, this is, like, it might be the best movie tie-in game of all time next to Spider-Man 2. Like, th there's no beating it. Feeling like Wolverine has never been more sweeter, but damn it, I'm gonna keep myself from talking about it because I have to talk about it for another video. It's so interesting to see where we came from. Well, let me know what you think. What did you think of X-Men Origins Wolverine? Did you like it? 
Like, did it age well for you? Are you kind of glad that we got better X-Men movies, like better Wolverine movies afterwards, like with James Mangle, with Wolverine and Logan? I'm just happy that, like, Fox wasn't ashamed and scared to make a solo Wolverine movie. I'm so happy that they actually tried again, because that's another good thing I can say about the movie. At least it didn't make Fox scared to make another Wolverine movie, because that would have been a travesty. I would not want to live in a world where we didn't get Logan. That would have sucked. But anyway, if you're new here, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. 